In 1970, a television program debuted that changed the way millions of people looked at faith. The Hour of Power. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Featuring the ministry of Robert Schuler, taught a generation that through God's love, your scars can be turned into stars. It was an idea that launched the most popular inspirational television program of its time. And today, the Hour of Power continues with a new voice for a new generation. When you put your trust in God, nothing can stop you. Pastor Bobby Schuler will encourage you and share a message that can give you a new perspective on life. Because whatever your circumstance or the obstacles you face, this moment can be your Hour of Power. Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to the Hour of Power and thanks for your support to us. Our program is bilingual broadcast. If your TV is equipped with NACAM facility, you can choose to watch Hour of Power in original English or Cantonese dubbing. Good morning, dear friends of Hour of Power. This year, Hour of Power Hong Kong is celebrating our 20th anniversary. So as Hour of Power US Ministry having the 50th anniversary, this joyous celebration, thus Hong Kong special this year, we choose the theme, Peace Upon Hong Kong. Everyone needs peace at heart, especially Christians. We need the peace from the Lord, because we believe God helps those who trust in Him. Peace will come upon us. Thus, we choose Peace Upon Hong Kong as the theme. In the coming weeks, Christians with different backgrounds will share with us Archbishops, pastors, scholars, friends from business and professional sectors, you will notice one thing in them. The peace of the Lord is in their hearts. The peace of the Lord is in their lives. We wish that Hour of Power, Hour of Power, could help you grow in your life. And that Hour of Power can continue bringing the message of faith, hope, and love to our viewers. May you walk in the peace of the Lord. God bless. Hour of Power, Hong Kong 20th Anniversary, 2020 Hong Kong Special, Peace Upon Hong Kong. Our sharing cases are Rev. Dr. Gary Shek, Director of Sunrise House of Prayer, Dr. Richard Lee, Executive Chairman and CEO of War Key Hong Group, Mr. Eddie Mack, the Chairman of School Management Committee, Evangel College. Rev. Dr. Joseph Mock, Senior Pastor of Victory Church, Evangelical Free Church of China. Dr. George Mack, Honorary Consultant of Hong Kong Bible Society. Rev. Dr. John Nielgroof, the Founding Pastor of the Vine Church Hong Kong. Rev. Lem Meng Ngoc, Chief Executive of the Catering Evangelistic Fellowship. Rev. Dr. Kwok Man Chi, the President of Evangel Seminary. Prof. Joseph Song, Mok Heng Yu Professor of Medicine, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. The Most Rev. Dr. Paul Kwong, Archbishop of Hong Kong Xing Kung Kui. Our Power 2020 Hong Kong Special. Peace Upon Hong Kong. Our sharing guest for today is Rev. Lam Meng Ok. Rev. Lam Meng Ok, the Chief Executive of the Catering Evangelistic Fellowship. He went astray when he was young, but God did not forsake him. God led this prodigal son to return to the Heavenly Father and became a servant of God. Serving the chefs in the catering industry, he encouraged us to reflect our lives during difficulties. Our circumstances may not be changed, but the peace of the Lord will be in our hearts. Stay tuned for the sharing of Rev. Nam. Later in the program, you can hear his testimony, how God changed his life and leads him to serve in the catering industry. In Psalm 23, verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I neck nothing. Today, Pastor Bobby Shiller shared his message, Live a life of abundance. There are lots of conscious and unconscious fear in life. Fear is caused by neck, 
and not enough. When we focus on material things, we will have a feeling of lack. In Genesis 22 verse 14, So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Pastor Bobby Shirley teaches us, We can truly live a life without lack, because we are living in the kingdom of God right now on earth. God is the creator of this universe. Everything is created by Him. Thus, we have to change our thinking, focus on God and not we don't have, and believe He will provide our needs. The Lord is my shepherd. I neck nothing. So, fear not. Let go of our problems to God. Live a life with open hands. Be generous and love our neighbors. In this way, we will invite opportunities and blessings into our lives. Then we can live a life of abundance. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. morning. And welcome church family. It always feels good to be with you. Thank you for taking the time to be here so we can gather together and worship together. You know, something that we feel like the Lord has been showing us a lot the last couple of years is that as long as you keep your heart soft, struggle makes you stronger. And I know that might be annoying to hear if you're going through a really, really heavy struggle, but my wish is to give you hope that you can come out of this stronger than you have ever been. Today, Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we love you. And we ask in Jesus' name, Father, many of us are going through challenges. Our country is, gosh, is it struggling so much and all of this tension and everything that's going on. We just pray, Father, for peace clear-mindedness, wisdom, knowledge, mercy, forgiveness, joy. We, we believe that you can do those things in our city, our state, our country. And uh, we pray for all the internationals here as well and all the challenges that they face. Um, we just pray your blessing. We thank you, Lord, we love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.
reason for Bobby's message, the words of our Lord found in Psalm 57, 4. I am in the midst of lions. I am forced to dwell among ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp as swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart, O oh God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul, awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Wow. Amen. As written in the Gospel of John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Good morning, dear friends of Hour of Power. It's time for the 20th anniversary of Hour of Power in Hong Kong, Peace Upon Hong Kong. Today, I am so happy to invite my good friend for our interview today. He is very special. He is related to the food and beverage industry. He is the chief executive of the Catering Evangelistic Fellowship, Reverend Lam Anyok. Hello, Reverend Lam. Hello. Reverend Lam, you have been serving the Catering Fellowship for 30 years, serving many people in the catering industry. I believe in these 30 years, you must have many experiences to share with us especially how to spread the gospel to the catering industry. Hello, Reverend Lan. Hello. I'm uh, so hello, glad Mr. you came to our interview on Hour of Power. Mm. Reverend Lam, many people know you are the chief executive of the Catering Evangelistic mm. Fellowship, and they also know that you have done so much work within the catering industry. Could you tell us a bit about your background and maybe how you came to believe in Jesus? I had many chances to contact with Christianity. Not yet finished primary five. I had already changed five schools. <laughs> wow. Changed the school every year. <laughs> Three of them were Christian schools, even in a Christian kindergarten. All right. However, all along, I thought Jesus was a Westerner and not a Chinese, so I was very resistant. Mm. When I got married, I chose a wife who believed in Jesus. At that time, I knew nothing about this mm. God. Yeah. I read a lot of Bible, but didn't know much about God. Why I believed in Jesus? Many people may ask if I was influenced by my wife. Actually, it's not. Once my wife's church held a retreat camp, they needed a chef to cook for three days. They asked me if I could help. You were a chef by that time? Yes, I was a chef. But I just hoped to gain good credit <laughs> because I did many bad things. Uh, I promised to help. However, I was strong in mind that even Jesus was real. I would not believe in him. Okay. Many people talked to me about Jesus in these three days during the camp. When I washed the dishes, they helped. When I peeled the garlic, they also helped. When I cooked, they stood beside me. They talked to me while they were helping me. Believing in Jesus is really very good, blah, blah, blah. blah. That's very lovely. Yes, but I felt so troublesome. <laughs> After I finished cooking the breakfast in the last day, I made an excuse and left early. It was in Chung Chao. It was in Chung Chao while nearly halfway home, just at To Fung Shan. I did not know it was To Fung Shan because I just moved to Sha Tin. I passed by there, suddenly a voice said, If Jesus is a true God, why don't you grasp the opportunity to believe in him? Yes, I had never thought of this objectively. If Jesus is a real God, how shall I face him? 
I felt amazed. These words seem speaking to me. Therefore, the week after the camp, I went to church with my wife. I was very touched since I came to faith. Especially, I understood myself was a bad man. I don't even like myself. Before that, I always heard people say, I am a sinner. My response was, who are not sinful? Everybody has sin. My sin had been convicted by the judge. You served the sentence already? Yes, I already served the sentence. However, when the preacher shared with me that I was a sinner, I recollected the deeds I had done in my life. I don't like myself. Why the God who created me was willing to be crucified for me? I was so touching. And I wanted to know more about this God. So I read the Bible whenever I had time. I finished reading the New Testament in a month and the whole Bible in six months. Mm -hmm. I had this experience too. I don't like to study. I only mm. read comics. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of I could read books. There are many books which I liked. For example, biography, empowerment of spiritual great man, and about power of prayer, etc. Ah, oh, that's very good. I also read many testimonial books. Whether this religion is real, why I have to believe. In this process, my life was strengthened. My wife observed me and said, Before you believed in Jesus, when you slept and dreamt, you scolded people with foul language. Hmm. After I believed in Jesus, I also had sleep talking. I sang oh, hymns. You sang hymns? <laughs> yes, I pray too. I'm very grateful. I obviously changed a lot after believing in Jesus. Previously, I used to speak foul language. After I believe in Jesus, I didn't hmm. want to speak anymore. God stopped you. Yes, I no. changed and I felt encouraged. Later, I had the chance to study theology. I remembered when I graduated, my mum had observed me for five years to see if her son could really turn a new life. Before that, she almost had forsaken me. The first time I went to correctional institution, she came to see me. The second time, I went again to Stanley Correctional Institution. She didn't visit me anymore. I knew that she had lost hope in me. She lost the hope. Her son was hopeless. Yes, hopeless. However, after I believed in Jesus, she saw my life was changed and she observed me for five years. Finally, she also believed in Jesus. It's amazing. This is God's grace. Not long after I believed in Jesus, I went to Philippines to work. At that time, we had just been allocated a public housing unit and needed renovation. We borrowed money and needed to repay. In fact, after I believed in Jesus, I changed my career. Didn't work in the catering mm. industry anymore. It's okay. because I couldn't go to church. Yeah. I changed to a woodwork apprentice. Oh. At that time, my income was over $3,000 in the year mm. 1981. For woodwork apprentice, only $1,000 something. Very big difference, but I needed to repay. Then an opportunity came. A company in Philippines needed to recruit a chef. We went there together. Actually, our friends were worried. However, amazingly, after arriving in Philippines, at that time, prostitution, gambling, alcohol, and drugs were our normal life. Very grateful in Philippines, after I believed in Jesus. I don't want this kind of life anymore. In the dormitory, I could only watch TV. TV programs only broadcasted in Tagalog, English, or Fukian dialect, and I didn't understand three of them. <laughs> Therefore, I could only read the Bible. I read, oh, great. and I prayed. It's amazing. In those days, I told the dim sum chef to wake me up at 5 a.m. Then I began to pray until 10 a.m. and went to work. I prayed and read the Bible. You prayed for four or five hours? Yes, at oh, first great. I couldn't, but later I read the empowerment of those spiritual great men. Notice the power of prayers was so great. Is it true? Also, I had no other choice at that time. 5 a.m. in the early morning, it was called dawn break. I, I just wanted more time, and it was very quiet ah. there. Yes, yes. I don't know it was dawn break. I just wanted the experience to achieve more things through prayers. 
Our Heavenly Father is so real. I then prayed. At first, I don't know what to say in my prayer. Then I said, Jesus, I don't have much to say. <laughs> However, you say that the Holy Spirit will teach us how to pray. Jesus, please teach me. I said to God, I'll wait for you for one hour. I knelt on the floor and sang hymns. I didn't speak, but sing hymns. Ah, until finished. Nothing happened on the first day. The second day, I saw a picture about the incarnation of Jesus. How he sacrificed for us. I was so touched. In that period of time, I showed my thanksgiving and praises naturally. It came out naturally. In fact, that period of time was important. It made me more convinced about my belief in that year. Enabled me to be more focused, because my main job was to cook for my boss in that company. When my boss went for business meetings, we had no other work, so I had more time to read the Bible and books. You read spiritual books? Yes, yes. I almost finished reading a book in two days. I was also lucky that I could attend a Cantonese church which was suitable for me. They were all students from Hong Kong, studying dentistry in the Philippines. Only me was a chef. They were very nice to me and encouraged me in the core group. I was very encouraged in their church. Hmm. The church does not exist anymore because no more Hong Kong students. Most of the dentists of that church, after completing dentistry, studied theology and went to missionary work. Many mm. of them now are pastors. Mm, thank God. Under such an atmosphere, I was greatly encouraged. One day during devotional time, I read Romans 12, 1, 3, very touching. In view of God's mercy, to offer your body as, as a living sacrifice. I asked God, what would I do after returning to Hong Kong? I hadn't thought of serving God. Amazingly, I had the chance to study theology. After coming back to Hong Kong and helped me to know the ways to express systematically, my beliefs and my hope in my heart, yet I still didn't want to spread the gospel to the catering industry. I believe that God was training you at that period. Yes. That God lets you have quiet time in the Philippines. Yes. You wake up so yes. early every day. You use a yes. few hours to kneel down and pray, draw close yes, to yes. God. First you pay the cost and then your willingness to live out a disciplined prayer life. God attracted you and you were willing. Yes. God was training you. Mm-hmm. And it was a yes. rare experience. Mm -hmm. Reverend Lamb, I can see God's good intention for you. Yes. In the catering fellowship, which you have served in for 30 years, mm -hmm. you served in this fellowship, encountered people in the catering industry. Mm -hmm. Their lifestyles are different from us, right? Mm -hmm. They do not have regular working hours. They have irregular hours. When we go to church, they are busy at work. Mm -hmm. How do you serve them? How do you spread the gospel? Are there many challenges in this process? That's many. <laughs> Their work schedule is different from other people. Their culture is also affected. Their work schedules induce them to form their own group separate them from the society and their families. They make life with their colleagues more than their family. Thus we held gatherings, evangelical meetings. We even took initiatives to visit them. I thought that I was very customized to local needs. 
Our meeting time was after 11 p.m. in the evening. Not on Sunday, but on Monday. It has been 30 years now. However, we found that it didn't work well. We entered the front door. They fled at the back door. They knew we came to spread the gospel. They didn't quite accept it. Until 2016, we had a vision. We prayed at Chimsha Choi East. There were many restaurants there. And at an earlier time, we had contacted many church brothers working in Chimsha Choi East. A spiritual atmosphere there. We wanted to have a breakthrough, so our workers prayed together and asked God. One day, God said to me, Chef's Day. I knew there were Teacher's Day, Nurse's Day, and Doctor's Day. Never heard of Chef's Day. I searched the information immediately. Actually, a long time ago, there is International Chef's Day on October the 20th every year. So I thought, how to make a breakthrough to the gospel work in the catering industry? How to give credit to them? Yes, you're right. So that they can ascertain their identity and their own value and think about their future. Yes. We then began to contact churches in different districts and organized the Love Banquet in Hong Kong. We gathered all the chefs and liaised with the churches to serve the needy in the community. Hmm. Not only elderly people. I did not preach during the event. However, I shared my testimony. Yes. Gradually, they took photos with the pastors. Later, some labor unions accepted us. They invited pastors to their annual celebrations. Some even invited the pastors to share. Hmm. <laughs> I was very happy. After many years, the gospel has been implanted in the catering industry. This is very important. How many Christian chefs are there now? Are there chefs starting to believe in Jesus? Uh, many, many. We have no calculation, but a few hundred. You mentioned before it was 11.45 p.m. on every Monday. Yes, we start at 11.45 p.m. It's because having work all day, they may not be able to stay calm right after work, need to have more time for themselves, otherwise cannot balance life. Thus, they will not go to bed early. This is very important at this golden time at night, bringing life and Jesus to them. Yes. It's because they do not sleep early. Yes. It's a golden time. The most important time in life is to experience mm. God. I would like to ask you, yes. now there is pandemic. Mm. The catering business is in difficulty in Hong Kong. How would you serve them? Um, They are also having financial difficulties. Yes. We need a job. Can you help us? In this process, we find that feeding them with fish. Why can't we teach them fishing? Yes. How to give them a job under such circumstances? Big companies close down. Small companies can't even survive. So all our co-workers began to pray together. At last, we all got inspired. Takeaway through the food delivery platform yes. to help the restaurants in local districts so that they can develop yes. takeaway business. Yes. Because of the restrictions of eating in, takeaway is becoming important. We do it by faith. In fact, the expenses of catering evangelistic fellowship rely on a platform called Five Loaves, Two Fish.
Reverend Lam, Hong Kong is now facing the pandemic,、mm. so would you please use a few words to encourage the people in Hong Kong on how to have peace of mind? It's always said, the worst moment is the best moment. I recalled a car accident to the Philippines. My nose was broken, broke like a butterfly. I became unconscious. Then, when I woke up, I knew I had a car accident. I thanked God immediately. However, I didn't know what should I thank God. Later, I thought of thanking God, because I believed in Jesus, I could go to heaven. Yet, Jesus did not receive me. Why? I believe that He still had something to accomplish through me, before He received me in heaven. At that moment, I came to understand the meaning and value of my life, and my life direction. I was really happy at that time. Therefore, I think there is blessing of God in the worst situation. Maybe because of the pandemic, people now have much reflection upon their lives. This reflection originates from our hearts. No matter how the environment changes, there is peace in our mind. There is blessing from God in the worst situation. Amen. The environment has not been changed, but peace is in our Amen. hearts. Amen. Reverend Lam, throughout your life, maybe you can think about which Bible verses touched you the most, and maybe think about how to encourage us to experience God more in our lives. Yes. Being a chef in the catering industry. Which verse touched you the most? Would you please share with our friends of Hour of Power? When I dedicated myself to the gospel work in the catering industry, is Psalm one two six five six? Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. It's so strange. Why sow with tears and not with sweat? <laughs> It's a metaphor of the feeling of coming back. Yes. The reunified people were expecting those who have not turning back. The psalmist thought this was not easy. To give up a stable life and go to an unstable place. Why? For the destined blessings of God in Zion, in Canaan, they were willing to come back. Back to Jerusalem. Yes. The psalmist used the contradicting feeling of the sower. Likewise, our ministry and our lives also facing a lot of contradictions. But can we believe? With our faith, we trust that God loves the chefs. Every time when I struggle in my serving, Psalm one two six becomes my strong encouragement. Thank God, those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Amen. Reverend Lam, your encouragement to us today is so good.、Yes. We all know those who sow with tears will reap with、yes. songs of joy. I hope we will have another time to invite you again to share with us on our、sure. hour. Okay. If there's the opportunity, please prepare a banquet for our viewers, <laughs> a spiritual banquet. <laughs> Amen. Amen.
Friends, would you hold your hands like this as a way of receiving? Let's say this creed together. I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I am the beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. Thanks. You can be seated. So today's sermon is on this idea of Psalm 23, that we li truly live a life without lack when we live in the kingdom of God. And uh, this month, I want you to see that that uh, truly is a reality, and, I, and my hope is that a shift takes place in your thinking and in our thinking as a congregation, and that from that change in thinking, it's crystallized into new behavior and to a new reality. Psalm 23 is one of the most beloved, uh, probably the most famous and beloved passage in the whole Bible. There's a lot of fear in, in the world today. There's a lot of conscious fear, stuff where we can label, say we're actually afraid of, but there's a lot of unconscious fear too. A worry, a hurry, a drive. That's not, it's not a drive of desire, it's a drive of fear. It's motivated by lack, scarcity, not enough. Uh, maybe you felt this way, I don't have enough money. I don't have money to pay my bills. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough health. I don't have enough friendship, companionship, kindness, love in my life. I don't have enough freedom. I can't make the decisions I, I want. I can't do the things I want to do. I can't pursue my dreams because of all, all those other things. So very often when that happens to us, our life and our world begins to shrink. As we begin to focus on everything we don't have, we have this mentality that everything is scarce. It's not, not enough. And when that be, happens, we become protective of what we do have and angry at those who don't give us what we need. Love, friendship, money, pay, time, freedom, etc. And so much of the sort of bad behavior in our world is actually not coming from a place of evil, vile, anything like that. It's coming from a place of fear. It's a coming from a place of lack, coming from a place of insufficiency. Very often when you yell at your spouse, it's probably because you feel like you lack something in your marriage that you need. There's, so, there's all these deeper unconscious things that drive many of our behaviors. And I believe that at the heart of that is this, this feeling of lack. Or maybe you have all the money in the world and you just still feel like you lack something, purpose, meaning, time, love, uh, family. So when we read in the scripture that we, we are invited through Jesus Christ to live in a new reality where Christ is king and where we lack nothing. And Christ invites us to live by faith and not by fear and believe that that world actually exists and that we're actually in it now. It's called the kingdom of God, the reign of God, the range of God's effective will. That when we live in that place, our scarcity, our insufficiency, our feelings of lack that drive so much of the things we don't like about ourselves, our addictions, our fears, our sleepless nights, a lot of those things begin to diminish, if not go away entirely. And this is at the heart of the gospel, the kingdom of God. Not just I go to heaven when I die, but that heaven is actually made available to us today if we choose to simply change the way we think and as a community turn our hearts towards God. In the kingdom of God, there is no, no lack. And that we live in a world that God loves us and God wants to provide for us and that we don't have to be afraid. Maybe you're coming here today and you do feel worried, stressed out, anxious. Fear not! It's the most common command in the Bible. Fear not! Don't be afraid so that God can come in and do something wonderful in your life. Uh, a person is a mind. A person is first and foremost a, mi a mind. A mind with a will. A mind that can make decisions, that can act in the world around him or her, and that when changes take place in a person's mind, then down the road, other changes begin to take place in the will and then effectively in society, in churches, and schools, etc. So the first, the source, the root of all change first happens 
in the mind and how we perceive the world around us. Jesus said, if your eyes are good, your whole life will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. What does that mean? It has to do with the worldview. The way you see the world and think about the world and think about God affects your body. It affects your soul. It affects your behavior. It affects how you engage with your spouse and your kids and the people you work with. And if you think about, what am I missing? And, and what, what am I owed? And why is my husband not acting this way? Or why is my wife not acting this way? Or why are my kids behaving this way and saying these things to me? And why is this happening at my job? And all of those questions have to do with yourself. What am I owed? Why hasn't this happened for me? Where am I going to go? Where's my next meal going to come from? Where's my next paycheck going to come from? And so the more we focus on ourselves, the smaller the world gets. And although your life matters, let me tell you, God cares more about your life than you do. Let God do the caring. Let God do the worrying for your life. Let the king who owns a ca cattle on a thousand hills care for his kids. He might be the king, but that makes you a prince or a princess. Don't worry. He'll provide for your needs. It'll be okay. You can take your mind off of self-obsession, and you can put it on things that are beautiful and glorious and good. That is the Lord. The Lord first to focus on him and his light and his goodness. And that will loosen your grip on yourself and allow you to be kind to your neighbor, even when they don't give you the things you need. To be loving, to be listening, to, to give peace away, to give kindness away, selflessly and naturally, out of who you, you are becoming because your mind is changing from self, a shrinking world and self-obsession to an expanding world that is the kingdom of God. And it is this thing that Jesus preaches about the most. The kingdom of God, the reign of God, the Father's world, which is so vast and, and, uh, and hard to explain and so I say to you today, turn your mind first towards God and away from your problems and watch how that begins to actually change your problems. I promise you, this will happen. Romans chapter 1, verse 18, uh, Paul says, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them. So they, so they know God, but they suppress the truth about God. Because God has made it plain to them. You know what he's saying? There's actually people in the world that God has picked to see him and understand him clearly. But because of their desire um, for whatever, evil, they, they turn their back on this knowledge and even suppress it to people who may not be as able to see spiritual things as they are. I actually believe that's a spiritual gift, that there are some people in this church and other places that just are born with a, a natural inclination towards, um, towards the kingdom of heaven, towards God and the spiritual things. And many of these people become the most harmful people because they willingly, knowing deep down inside God's power and life, abundance and, and love, turn their back on him uh, to become you know, cruel and selfish and all these other things that, that we don't want. Verse 20, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Do you know what he says there? It's just plain. Paul just says it's just plain. It's all around us. God's creation and glory. This is these tree, new trees here, which I think are very nice. Thank you, Chad. God made those. You know, they grow. They just, you put a seed in a pot and it just grows. It's amazing. And, and the, the world is so wonderful. Psalm 23, many of you know it, but David begins by saying something profound. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Wow, imagine you could say that and believe it. How would your life change? I don't need anything. The God of the whole universe, the God that puts the power of an atom bomb in a tiny little atom, the God that owns a cattle on a thousand hills, God that has all the time, money, health, and goodness, and everything in the world, he can provide for me. The Lord is my shepherd. You know, Ju Judaism and Christianity teaches that, that this is a God who loves the people who follow him. David himself was willing to lay his life down 
for his sheep. In the pagan world where you're supposed to kill children for you pagan gods, this is a God who lays his life down for the people who follow him. What a loving and compassionate God. He makes me lie down in green pastures. You know, when sheep lie down in green pastures, it's because they're full. I used to say, it's like, you might as well say, he makes, if this is like, you know, Bobby, he lies down in a field of pizzas. <laughs> you know, I've already had my fill. Pasture is where sheep go to eat. So when sheep are lying down and soft, fluff, they're relaxed, they're at ease, and they're full. He's going to fill you. He's going to meet your needs. Um, he leads me beside the quiet waters. Right? He, I'm not thirsty anymore. All of my insatiability and craziness and, and drive and, and sleeplessness, he's, he's just satiating my thirst. He quenches the thirst of my soul. And that's what he said. The next thing, he refreshes my soul. He renews and restores my soul. Anybody here have a wounded soul? Join the Wounded Soul Club. Right? The life is hard. You know, when I talked about self-obsession, you know, don't feel guilty about that. Self-obsession begins, it begins with pain. If you hit your thumb with a hammer, you're going to be mindful of your thumb over the next few days. <laughs> when you get hit hard by life, it's easy to, to become afraid and to become obsessed with yourself. But you can let go of that. You don't have to be afraid. He's going to heal your soul. He's going to heal your thumb. He's going to heal your life so that you can give and love again. He guides me along the, the right paths for his namesake. That's the natural outflow of a nourished, satiated soul that's healed. You just can't help but do the, the right thing to your neighbor. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I like, I like King James better there. We're just going to stick with that one. Even if death hovers over me, even if the shadow of darkness hovers, I'm not afraid. I have nothing to be afraid of. Uh, I will fear no evil. And then this, you can just say it to the Lord. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Rod and staff, that's what you fight with. God's going to fight your battles for you. Uh, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I'm just not afraid of those who are threatening me. I'm not afraid of those who want to harm me. My cup overflows. It's just overflowing. Have you ever seen somebody that's so full of joy and life and abundance that they're almost annoying? Like they're spilling over onto others. It's like, oh, that guy, you know, that girl. This is David. In the kingdom of God, my cup is just completely overflowing. I have way more than I need, right? My cup overflows. You anoint my head with oil. It's the idea that the, the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. And yes, I know I inverted that accidentally. Surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord for a couple of years. <laughs> I will. Forever! Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. God is never, ever going to let you go. You don't understand. You're like diamonds to him. You're like treasure, like rubies. You're not trash. You're not thrown away. You're not worthless. You matter. You belong to him. You almost don't have a choice in the matter. It's like once you were baptized and you said yes to the Lord, you became his kid. I'm not ever letting go of my kids. God's never letting go of you. Forever and ever, as long as God is alive, you'll be alive with him. That's a promise. Energy, you know, matter changes, but energy can't be destroyed. That's another thing we learned in the 20th century. You can't, you can't be destroyed. And, and, and this, is, this is a great gift that God has given us, is that through Jesus Christ and through his cross and resurrection, we can know without a shadow of doubt, not because of our behavior, but because of his good works, because of his faithfulness, because of his love, we don't have to be afraid. And that helps our life loosen and blossom like a flower where we can just love our neighbor and live without lack. Amen? Amen. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You can smile today. Don't worry. It will be okay. But I just want to pray over you real quick. Father, we thank you that you love us. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would confirm 
in the hearts of everyone under the sound of my voice, everything uh, that, that is true that I've said, that, that we'd believe it, not just in our heads, but in our hearts, begin to change not just our mind, but our will. Lord, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching our power and your support to us. In Psalm 23, verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I neck nothing. Today, Pastor Bobby Shiller shared his message, Live a life of abundance. There are lots of conscious and unconscious fear in life. Fear is caused by lack and not enough. When we focus on material things, we will have a feeling of lack. In Genesis 22 verse 14, So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Pastor Bobby Shirley teaches us, We can truly live a life without lack because we are living in the kingdom of God, right now on earth. God is the creator of this universe. Everything is created by Him. Thus, we have to change our thinking, focus on God and not we don't have, and believe He will provide our needs. The Lord is my shepherd. I neck nothing. So, fear not. Let's go of our problems to God. Live a life with open hands. Be generous and love our neighbors. In this way, we will invite opportunities and blessings into our lives. Then we can live a life of abundance. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Hour of Power, Hong Kong 20th Anniversary 2020 Hong Kong Special, Peace Upon Hong Kong. Our sharing cases are Rev. Dr. Gary Shek, Director of Sunrise House of Prayer, Dr. Richard Lee, Executive Chairman and CEO of Wall Key Hong Group, Mr. Eddie Mack, the Chairman of School Management Committee, Evangel College, Rev. Dr. Joseph Mock, Senior Pastor of Victory Church, Evangelical Free Church of China. Dr. George Mack, Honorary Consultant of Hong Kong Bible Society. Rev. Dr. John Nielgroove, the Founding Pastor of Divine Church Hong Kong. Rev. Lam Men Ngoc, Chief Executive of the Catering Evangelistic Fellowship. Rev. Dr. Kwok Man Chi, the President of Evangel Seminary. Professor Joseph Song, Mok Heng Yu Professor of Medicine, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. The Most Reverend Dr. Paul Kwong, Archbishop of Hong Kong, Xing Kung Kui. Our sharing guest for next week is Reverend Dr. Kwok Man Chi. Stay tuned. Reverend Dr. Kwok Man Chi, the President of Evangel Seminary. He attended a summer camp when he was young. Through a hymn, God moved the heart of Reverend Court to serve him. Now, he dedicates for the Lord to educate and train the good soldiers of God. Life influences life. Reverend Court teaches us to lay down our feeling and emotion, return to our inner hearts, draw close to God. We will attain the peace of God. Our Pauti's motivational TV program is broadcast weekly on TVP Pearl Channel. Every Saturday at 10 a.m. in the morning, and every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. And you can also watch online simultaneously on My TV Super or www.hourofpower.org.hk. Thanks for joining. God loves you and see you next week on TVB Pearl. Join us again next week as Pastor Bobby Schuler brings you a message of hope on the Hour of Power. And Pastor Bobby would love to hear from you. Just write us. Until next week, remember to let your hopes, not your hurts, shape your future.